Many fans of the men's hockey program would agree that today's guest is among the most colorful and exciting players to have ever worn the green and white. He was the type of player who could frustrate the opposition with his high skill and compete levels and then torment them with his chirps and his antics. He was also known to be a tremendous clutch player and went on to become the fourth leading scorer in team's history. He hails from Scarborough, Ontario, but he has a special place in his heart for Prince Edward Island. Please welcome John Nelson. John Nelson, I've had this day circled on my calendar for a while. It's great to have you on for Panther Primer today, buddy. Uh, thanks for having me, Schultz. Yeah, I was uh, be, be true. Be honest with you, I was uh, super excited when you uh, when you asked me uh, to come on and join you, and, and uh, with the super uh, uh, rich history of, uh, of of Prince Edward Island and UPI and and, and the Islanders, I uh, it's going to be fun to reminisce with you. For sure. So, Nelly. Um, you're a Scarborough boy. Uh, you grew up just outside of Toronto. Uh, you had the good fortune of playing for probably one of the more historic junior franchises in Canada, the Toronto Marlboros. Uh, you also had the unique distinction of being uh, a member of the last team for that storied franchise. Uh, you look back on it, that must have been a pretty cool thing for a local boy to be part of a franchise like that. It, it was Norm. It was uh, it was exciting for me because I grew up a Leaf fan. Yeah. Um, I was drafted. Uh, the funny thing, I was at that time there was no unlimited rounds for the draft, right. and I was I was rated in the twentieth round at the time. <laughs> and a fellow by the name of Randy Geetsky was a was a, uh, a scout for uh, for the Toronto Marlies, and he was also a coach. He coached against me, and he's cut me a few times. So he said, "Let's take a flyer on him in the twelfth round." Um, and at that time, I had like 130 points playing midget, mm -hmm. but nobody wanted to go 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 near me, right? Right. I couldn't couldn't skate, and uh, so anyways, I took a flyer. I I showed up to camp and was just expecting to go play tier two junior A, yeah. and uh, from there it uh, evolved into I I upset the camp and ended up making the team, and, yeah. and was very fortunate uh, to get the opportunity to play down at the Maple Leaf Gardens. Mm -hmm. um, was there every day and uh, yeah. got the uh, hang out and watch the Leafs and and that uh, was a big part of a uh, big part of history and then what happened to be there in 89 when Ballard was getting ill and he was kind of you know losing his his uh, senses a little bit if you will mm -hmm. um, and uh, I what happened to be they sold our team to the Hamilton uh, we called ourselves the Dukes of Hamilton it was mm -hmm. the next year and, and uh, so we moved on from there so it was an exciting time it was fun going to school there playing for the Toronto Marlies with the rich history yeah. Uh, we got treated exceptionally well there, um, and uh, just playing there every every Saturday was exciting. We at that time it was kind of a probably a fault against uh, our players would have been that all the scouts were there every Saturday because right. it was the most central place at the time for the OHL. So right. whenever they came in, they would if a Brian Fogarty came in or an Andrew Castles, well everybody would flock to the rink and go right. and go watch those guys and and uh, you know get an update on them. So. Yeah. Um, but it was uh, an amazing place to play and just a lot of great memories, a lot of great yeah. concerts. I used to go to wrestling. Any concert I wanted to, any wrestling match, I was a big wrestling guy at the time. You could always get in the back door too, right? I think you always. had a free pass, right? Oh, it was awesome. I used to bring 10 of my friends and say, if you guys want to go see Rush or do you want to go to a Leaf game? Or wow. and, the, and the ushers were amazing too. Yeah. They looked after us. Um, cool. And uh, yeah, so it was very cool and it was a great time to be a, to be a Toronto Marlin. For sure. So, Nelly, after you finish, the Dukes, uh, you're, I'm, I'm always kind of curious as to how guys come to UPEI. And what was your story? Like, how, how did you become how did you become a Panther? Well, really interesting story. Uh, it was So I went and tried out for Buffalo, and I didn't make Buffalo. Yeah. So I went to the East Coast League for 10 days. I uh, was there, almost made uh, – I was in uh, Roanoke, Virginia – yeah. Um, I didn't make it. So I decided that I'm going to go home and figure out what I'm going to do next. And I wasn't the greatest student. Okay. Um, so sitting at home, school really wasn't an option for me. I was kind of probably looking to try and go play pro or was looking at go maybe going to Europe. Mm -hmm. And then out of the blue, uh, UNB called. Uh, Mike Johnson called me out of the blue and said, oh, wow. hey, listen, we, uh, we'd like to have you. We'd like to commit to you. 
Um, so I, I was, I was ex- excited to do that. And then what, what came with that was the, the uh, St. John's vetoes started calling and said, Scott, what I had to do is I had to go back to high school and, and I had to upgrade my English oh, and pick another. And I took economics. And uh, when I was at PI, so they, I had to go, I was going to play uh, for you for the St. John's vetoes. I was committed. And a guy, I forget his first name, his last name was, or rather, first name was Neil, or his last name was Neil. He went away on vacation. He figured when he got back, he'd call me. So I sat for four or five days waiting for him to call me to commit to the vetoes and get going. And then the following September, I would have played for UNB. And then out of the blue, I got a call from Billy McMillan. Um, then they got into the picture. And then all of a sudden, Mike James started calling me. Okay. And so that all kind of evolved. And I said, listen, I've made a commitment already to go play here, but I haven't heard from them. And I waited a couple more days. They called back and I said, I'm in. I'm coming to PEI. So I just came before Christmas. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. And I was there for four games. Uh, We had two games. I arrived off the plane right into the dressing room. Uh, (laughs) So that that was pretty, uh, I was pretty, uh, really nervous. Um, You know, but what made me, uh, when I walked into that dressing room, well, Monty Emery played for the Marlies with me. Oh, really? So me and Monty hung out a little bit. And then when I first person I walked in, I walked, I made a walk through the door and I took, turned right to go in and I'm staring at Monty Emery. And I never, did I you never know that? Him. I did not know that. Oh, go away. So that kind of made me ease a little bit. Um, yeah. The guys in the room, they weren't big on Ontario guys at the time. <laughs> um, so, and uh, as, as I went through, I learned why. Um, and then, uh, I, we, we played that game. We won, we ended up winning four games in a row. So the following weekend, I made a deal with uh, Mike James. He says, are you going to come back? And I said, I'm coming back. I said, 100%. It wasn't even a, we didn't get it out of his mouth. And I said, I was coming back. I had mm-hmm. such a great week. Yeah. Um, I felt like I was a, a movie star, like the way that I was looked after and the way that people cared for me being there and, and to make sure that uh, I was I was okay and a place to stay and food to eat and yeah. a couple of pops to drink and, and mm-hmm. all that. And they were including me in on everything. Yeah. And I, I came back right after Christmas. I couldn't wait to come back. I think I came yeah. back before New Year's that year. I was just so excited to get back there and get going. So Not a bad uh, year, not a bad team to become acclimatized to coming in and winning a national championship. It general. was... It, it was incredible. And, and it, you know, Schultz, I, I didn't really know what I was getting into. I, uh, I've heard of senior hockey, never watched a game. Um, I heard it was pretty tough. Mm-hmm. Um, so and I was young, I was 21 years old. Yeah. And uh, coming in, and I always remember, it was funny, we played our first two games. We had a great, we had lots of fun with the guys after each game. Uh, the boys included me in everything that we did with their wives and, and mm-hmm. all that. So that, that made it feel pretty special. Sure. But I always remember I, the, the week after we played in uh, Camelton. And uh, I, I know I, I felt like a funny feeling, like I'm not being ex- – I was doing really well getting points and doing all that stuff, and we were winning, but I still didn't feel that, that connection with the group. And I remember I had to do something. I said, I got to do something here that's, that's, that's going to you know, get me connected. So I remember we were in Camelton. And I decided that I'm going to get, get the fight. So I, I fought Shane Renshaw. I remember I said, took him on it, said, pulled him out center ice, his buckets off, and I went at her. And so the boys were, once we got, we won the game, we jumped on the bus, we were heading home. And the boys, when I came on the bus, I, I always remember this vividly, come on the bus. And the guys just, it was just like, hey, man, this guy can fight. He can play. He's not afraid. And then from there, it just, it was like, that was my moment, my impact moment with that team. Yeah. And uh, which I've never shared with anybody. I've never told that story before. Interesting. And uh, I felt that impact moment that I'm coming back here, and this is where I want to be for uh, for you know next five years. So cool. So now you 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 did you you did go on to five years with the Panthers. Um, you know, you were probably uh, one of the more I would say colorful players. No, I would say the most colorful player to ever play at UPI. You were an entertainer. Uh, you were uh, you 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 were, you were the type of guy who could kill the opposition with your skill and your compete level, and then you would torture them with your tongue afterwards. So I got to know which way. What did you enjoy more? Did you enjoy more the, the goal scoring part and the playmaking part, or did you enjoy chirping them and giving it to them after the fact? Well. 
be honest with you, be truthfully, I enjoyed, you know, getting points. That's yeah. always uh, every kid's, uh, you know, goal is to, you know, and I was very fortunate enough to, to be a player that could score and could get goals. Um, and I don't know why. I don't know if I attribute it to my brother, Donnie, kicked the, uh, kicked the crap out of me a few times when I was younger. And I used to always taunt him all the time. So it didn't start on the ice. It probably started at home. And I used to get my brother, Mike, all frustrated. And uh, so I don't know if I enjoyed it or I did at the time. Um, but I know a couple of times I put myself in some pickles where I knew the next day waking up, the next time we played these guys, I got I to gotta man up here and, Right. And and go. So that that was always creates some anxiety and, and, yeah. and fun. But it was uh, I enjoyed the entertaining value of it. Um, yeah. You know, I look back now, I wish more I had stuck to playing hockey. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, my dad always tried to get me to stick to playing hockey and yeah. and uh, stay out of the state of all that uh, uh, ruckus and, and, and fighting. And and uh, but I didn't. And that was just the uh, part that I enjoyed and, and uh, playing for playing in, U, in UPI and playing for the Islanders. Yeah. I had a lot of guys that could back me up. So that nice. also made me about another six yeah. inches bigger. Yeah. And uh, so it was, uh, it was, it was, it was an interesting time. And, and uh, I, I enjoyed the whole uh, scope of things, doing everything. There was, sure. there was times I did it that I probably shouldn't have, but there was times yeah. that became very effective. Yeah. And uh, I, I know I took coaches out of their game. I've taken players out of their game and, and uh, what you watched me, uh, you know, maybe you missed a lot of it, or you, or you shut one. I didn't eye. have enough eyes to keep up with you, buddy. And I was trying to watch you. I just couldn't do it. You were, you were, you were the master of it. I would say the two most difficult people to ever referee that I ever did, you and David Lang. And uh, so, okay. you, <laughs> you know, you're in pretty good company when you're when you're keeping company with Langer. Oh yeah, yeah. Langer was he was he was thank you he was he was the master I think. Oh yeah, so, for sure. Yeah. So now you went on to five five years here at UPI. Um, you became the fourth leading scorer in in team history. Uh, so you know, outstanding career. Uh, book ended by a couple of appearances in the then AUAA final. Um, your first year, you come in ninety one ninety two. Uh, you lose to Akedia, who was kind of on the cusp of greatness, I guess, if you will. They went on quite a run in the early 90s. And then 95, 96, you bookended it with another final series against, which we'll talk about a little bit later. But maybe if you can sort of compare those two teams, Nelly, the 91, start with the 91, 92 team, and maybe we'll kind of unpack this a little bit. And maybe you can start off by talking about the 91, 92 team, what that was like. Uh, well, that's yeah, great question. Really good question. I, I, they were two different teams. Um, I think the 91, you know, we, at that time too, like I always believe, and I know there's once in, once in a while it, it doesn't happen, but you need those MVP type players on your team. Yeah. And that year we had Shane McCachron and we had Wayne McPhee. Wayne McPhee was an all-star and Shane McCachron got uh, a Canadian player of the year that year. And he was an exceptional player. Yeah. Um, so we had, we had that type of uh, guys in our team that, uh, that have played pro Right. that have tried pro that had great OHL or Quebec league careers. Um, you know, we had Tippy Thompson, we mm -hmm. had John Copples, yeah. uh, we had KJ. All Wilson. the leftovers from the 87, 88 winning. Oh yeah. Winning yes. And that's where, when we, when you went into the room, you felt that, Yeah, you know, you felt that, uh, that we could win. Um, and unfortunately Acadia was stacked. They were, uh, they, they were at a point of probably starting their greatness. Yeah. Um, and uh, they beat us in the finals of that year. And, I, and it was interesting because I remember bumping into one of the players, I forget his name right now. And I said, how would we would have, uh, how, how would we have done up in the Nationals if you guys would have won it? Wow. He goes, and uh, you know, which, which was nice to hear, but it was also, you know, a, uh, a shot in the heart type, type thing. Yeah. Cause it just made that, that uh, losing that uh, series uh, a little bit more, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, disappointing. Yeah. Sure. So, definitely. but uh, it was an amazing team. Uh, we had great defense. We had Jamie Blanchard and Scotty Blanchard in that. Yeah. Uh, John Copples, Wayne McPhee, uh, McKinnon. Uh, so we had we had a lot of depth guys. We had a lot of guys that could play. And then one of the big things I've always found on teams like that is everybody accepted their roles. Right. They might not have been happy, but they accepted the roles. And we had that type of uh, uh, unity with that team. Mm -hmm. And uh, we hung out all we hung out together all the time, and we had, we had good times together, and that also built a camaraderie. And, and unfortunately, we had we lost. Right, ninety five, ninety six. 
Cadia once again. 95, 96. That was, that was, uh, do, you know, you, it's like, I think it's a natural or normal feeling that you lose. Was, that was my first year, 91, 92. So I felt, you know, I, I got four more years. Sure, yeah. And you watch the guys in the room cry. Some guys cry. Some guys are quiet. Mm. Some guys they have their own emotional, uh, you know, uh, uh, episodes, if you will. Yeah. And 90, 95, 96, I remember we had the team. We were coming on strong. We picked up guys like Michael Harding. We picked up David LeMay. Yeah. Um, we, we had uh, K.J. White. We had Jimmy Sonmez. Yeah. Uh, we had a lot of local guys, Kenny Mack. Uh, we had uh, – uh, we, we, we were really – Glenn Craig we had uh, mm -hmm. playing. So we, we, we didn't have the – I don't say – I think we had a really close team. Yeah. Um, I, if I was to really call be truthful, I'd say the 91, 92 team was a more of a veteran uh, laden team. Yeah. Um, and the 95, 96 though, but we just went on this path. Um, yeah. UNB was, that was the start of UNB's. Right. Um, uh, Good dynasty. Yeah. Oh yeah. Which is still happening today as we know. Yeah. And I remember we went into, uh, the, with that team there, I remember their first uh, playoff round we went in. And uh, we 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 beat them. We went up. We had to go to UMB to beat them. We beat them one nothing. And right. uh, we were we were okay. Here we go. Mm -hmm. And then uh, so from there it just kind of it, it, it streamed. And we went on to play Moncton, and then went on to play Acadia. And unfortunately, right. we lost to Acadia. And I right. I always remember like the Acadia. I remember after I was done, and and uh, you reflect. And I remember I was just crying, like it's just like a just just sobbing. And I remember it was mm -hmm. over because I loved it so much there. And my yeah. like, and I knew my time might be ending. It might not be ending. Yeah. And I was in that point of, do I stay in PEI? Do I move on? Like, what do I want to do? And so, anyways, I ended up leaving. But I remember that was. Uh, I remember that night we went out together as a team, and being a leader of that team, um, it was a, it was, it was, an, it was an amazing night. We sat back, and I always remember we all sat in a corner at, uh, at the sports bar at uh, Bobby, Bobby, Bobby Mac Sports Bar. Uh, sports sports. Page. Sports page. We sat mm -hmm. in there, and Bobby Mack looked after us, mm -hmm. and uh, we had a great night, just reminiscing and thanking each other. And I just remember mm -hmm. how close we were as a team. Yeah. So that was uh, it. Was exciting, and it hurt. It was, it was disappointing for a while. Closure. Um, it was closure it, too. It is closure. It mm -hmm. is closure. But I'll tell you a funny story about that. So I remember we went back to my place. Um, I think me and Jimmy Thomas were living there, and all the boys came back that night after the sports page was set was shut down. And we were playing, sitting there playing cards, having some beers, having a good time. And then uh, um, uh, KJ's un uncle or uh, uh, cousin called. He was uh, Tom Waters called. Not Tom Waters. Uh, forget his name. He Bill says, Waters. listen. B B yep, Bill Waters. Yeah. He says, listen, I'm on the Ricky's phone. Ricky's agent. Ricky, Ricky Vibe's yeah. agent. Yeah. Yep, it was like 12 o'clock. We're yeah. all feeling, you know, feeling happy. And uh, he says, listen, I need you and KJ White are coming to – Newfoundland tomorrow Jeez. and the yeah. flight leaves at like eight o'clock in the morning. Right. So, yes. oh yeah. So me and KJ, we, whatever we still, we enjoyed our night. We're having fun. And then we woke up in the morning, we jumped on one of the puddle jumpers and off the new plan. We went for a whole week. So it was, uh, it all happened really quick. Uh, hey, the KJ keep the shirt on over in St. John's. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. He had it right. He was showing his guns. He was showing his guns. <laughs> he that's another story. That's, that's, that's another story. story. So listen, buddy, the, the, the Acadia series, um, you know, the, the semifinal series with Moncton, um, we, we all know how it ended. Um, tragic, uh, upsetting, whatever you want to call it. But, uh, you know, if you think about it, for, I, I'm, I'm curious, John, what, what it was like for you. Uh, we know we beat uh, U, UDM. You know, they were coming in defending national champs. Uh, you guys beat them, uh, I think, 8-6 in game one. Uh, actually, I think Forby had three goals and two assists in that game. I think He was uh, on fire. I, I, Forbes I was on that. fire. But, you yeah. know, they were coming in, and you guys beat them in the sportsplex. Um, it was a monumental, historic game for a lot of the wrong reasons. But I'm interested what your perspective was, having gone through that game. What did that do? What did that incident do for the team, Nelly, in terms of the re the response, you know, going forward? You knew you were going on for another series. How did the team respond to that? I thought the team responded really well, not just even before that in the series. Like, I remember, like, 
we had we had guys like Forby McPherson, we had Kate, like these guys were blocking shots, going out to the point. We were blocking shots, we were diving in front of shots, we were, yeah. and then that just all led up. So that incident um, made us closer, yeah. you know, and because it was all handled properly, you know right. what I mean. So we knew that we didn't do anything wrong. We had a great time talking about it. It was pretty yeah. crazy. You got a bunch of 20, 25 year olds uh, pretty ramped up. And so yeah. I remember going out that night and it was, it was a crazy night. It was a fun night. It was the talk of the town and, yeah. and uh, it just really brought us all together. Like we used to always like to have a lot of team parties yeah. um, at somebody's house. Sure. And uh, that's what we did that night and, yeah. and uh, just made us even tighter and closer. You, you were talking about the intensity of that game. Something that really struck out for me after that game, because I was, I was in attendance watching it, and, and I developed a new appreciation and level of respect for three of defensemen in your team, Jason Spruill, Dave LeMay, and Daryl Lavoie, because they got pounded that night, and they kept coming back, and UDM kept giving them more and giving them more and giving them more, and they didn't break – and I think that kind of typified the spirit of that team for me. It, it, it does. Like Dave LeMay was, he was the leader of that pack. Yeah. And not only could Dave play offensively, but he was tough. Yeah. And he, he, he was, didn't shy away from nothing. He could speak French. So he would give it back a little bit right. um, in his own time in French. Yeah. Um, and then Lavoie, he was just an excellent player. And you know what? He was, he was pretty tough. Like he was a targeted defenseman that year. He was one of the yeah. top point getters for defensemen yeah. that year. Yeah. And then Jason Sproul, he was just a guy that, you know, we brought, I remember Billy recruited him and as the year went on, he grew as a player Yeah. Um, and he was an awesome guy. So yeah. of course, when you're an awesome guy like that, guys are going to stick up for you sure. and look after you. And, yeah. and Jason was uh, just a great surprise for us, a really he good was. surprise for us. Yeah. And he was another guy. He wasn't big. No. He, Sproles was probably five, nine, five, ten, 10, yeah. but he didn't mind. He didn't mind getting hit, make, uh, making a pass to make a play. Right. And uh, and he was just an awesome guy. So and uh, so it was. You're right. You're really you're right. It was like the Coffin McPhee era. Like those were kind of our Coffin yeah. McPhees. For sure. Um, so yeah. it was great. It's nice to have those guys in the back end. So you go on from that. You you come into the finals against. You get Acadia again, and uh, Acadia is coming in. Uh, the series was uh, couldn't be any tighter. You lose game one in Acadia. 7-6 in overtime. You come back into game two, Mike Harding, you talked about earlier, scores in double overtime, descended to game three at the Civic Center, Sunday afternoon. The team scores 1959 of period one. The team scores again, 1959 of period two. You're down 6-4 with less than a minute to go. You score with 49 seconds left, to make it 6-5. Captain Doug calls a timeout. Players go over to the bench. And then this happened. And here we go, folks. Clancy and Nelson. This place is a buzz. Tuck rolls into the Acadia zone. Johnson goes to the bench. O'Reilly slaps it around the boards. White keeps it in. Now Weaver gets it. He sends it high in the air and it bounces into the Panther zone. Actually, just outside the line. And Harding is there. Blocked by Weaver. Set ahead. Now Clancy along the board. Weaver has it. Can't shoot it. LeMay dumps it high into the air. Here's Nelson left side. Goes in. Shoots. Goal! Awesome. Awesome. I remember that to this day. It was, that was, probably, it was exciting. And one of the reasons that it was so exciting was, was the fans. Eh? The fans were incredible. With 25 seconds remaining in regulation time, and it looks as if we could go to OT for the first consecutive game. Unbelievable! John Nelson scores two goals in a span of 24 seconds. They are going nuts here at the Civic Center in Charlottetown. We told you not to move a muscle. And the Panthers have done what they've done all year. You can't even hear yourself think at the Civic Center. All I can think of is the Chicago Stadium, Len. Uh, well, Len, I can't even give you the scoring summary of that goal because I couldn't hear it. All I know is that John Nelson got the goal. What a classic. Thanks for sharing. Thanks, Thanks for, yeah, gives me the shivers. <laughs> oh, gives me the shivers. It was, uh, I remember that, you know, and we almost scored. 
we almost scored with about seven, eight, seven. I know. Like we almost potted another one to win the I game, know. and we didn't. And uh, yeah, that was what an incredible time. Like I remember, um, Derek Roberts was telling me, he says, up in the stands, he says, it was crazy. He says, it was a seven-minute uh, standing ovation for our team. It just went, just it didn't stop. The horn actually rang 22 times. And, and the horn rang for two minutes and 25 seconds, I think. Thomas had to edit it because it was too long. When, and uh, Len Hawley, the longtime broadcaster of Acadia, he didn't speak for like a minute and a half. I think it was uh, might have been Scott Pound or Mark Pound was doing the color commentary with him, and neither one of them could say anything for a minute and a half. And all you heard was the horn going and going and going. It was crazy. It was crazy. And then uh, yeah, and then they had the unfortunate uh, one minute one minute into overtime they 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 potted a goal, and, and I got to say I was on for the maybe I was on for the tying goal, and but I was also on for the, uh, oh, for the goal again and. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, you know, maybe I probably, maybe I shouldn't have been, maybe I was too ramped up, but, uh, listen, I well, wouldn't change it. It, it was interesting, Ellie, during that, uh, I, I was trying to talk Glenn, Co Glenn Goody, Stretch Goody and Kevin Cooper were my linesmen. And we were trying to talk at center ice. We couldn't hear one another. And I finally said, boys, forget about it. We'll just drop the puck and, and, and we'll get going here again. But, uh, it was, uh, uh, it, it was something else, a monumental moment, and uh, you were a big part of it for sure. Wow, thanks. Where'd you get that yeah. from the archives? Uh, uh, you know what? I got it from a friend of mine. He, oh, uh, he, he passed it on to me, and, uh, and uh, he gave it to me. So uh, I, 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 I had it, and I, I, when I knew I was doing this interview with it, I had to pull it out. So oh, my God. I'm glad I had it. It was, it was uh, pretty sure. Yep. Yeah, crazy, crazy. Yeah, so Nelly, afterwards, so um, I, I got actually a question that came from a um, former teammate of yours, alumni, fellow alumni, and uh, the, the question is, um, name the former player who scored a hat trick in his first game playing on a line with you and KJ and never played again for two years following that on when he played at UPEI. Wow. Kenny Mack? Uh, Buddy oh, is. Eric Quinn? No. Buddy is. Hey, <laughs> Welcome me. over the gig. Not Beefy Glenn, is it? No. Buddy is, yeah. too. If Beefy had a hat trick. I think Beefy had three goals in five years. <laughs> yeah. um, love you, Beefy. I don't... I, I, I... Stumpy! Oh my gosh, Stumpy! What an amazing guy! What an amazing guy! I would guess who submitted the question too. Oh yeah, that would don't surprise me. Stumpy did. Oh yeah, I used to I used to have fun with Stumpy all the time, man. He was what an incredible guy he was. And oh, tough, dude. tough little, tough little bu bugger too. That kid. Talk about a guy good in the room too, huh? Oh yeah, yeah. He was fun. He made he helped make the room closer. Yeah, that's he awesome. Says, yeah, he's yeah, doing so really well. Yeah, that, that was one yeah. alumni submission I got, so he wanted me to ask you about that. That's fine. Um, so, Nelly, after you were done, you went on to a pro career, three years, uh, minor pro uh, mostly. Uh, also included a stint as goaltending in Winston-Salem. Um, so maybe touch a little bit about what your pro career was like and maybe shed a little bit of light on how you ended up playing goalie as, as a pro in that in that one game. Well, it's it. Uh, we were at, so I'll, I'll go back. Dave Cameron was big reason that I ended up in Port Huron because Dave was mm -hmm. coaching in Detroit that year. Then that team moved to Port Huron because I played with Dave. Um, I know Dave uh, was interested. He had reached out, so I made it made my way uh, to Port Huron the following year. And then uh, that game was it really interesting. So uh, we got in a line brawl, and the goalies got involved in it. <laughs> and then I believe we did have another line brawl and I don't know if the goalie was involved in it or was hurt, got hurt. So then all of a sudden we had no goalies and the referee came over and said, you got 15 minutes to get a goalie in that when you make your choice. And I just said right away, I, I, I was always very team oriented. I didn't care mm -hmm. if I opened doors, fourth line, first mm -hmm. line. Um, and I just said right away, I said, I'll do it. And we were getting killed like, say seven nothing or something like that yeah so the boys thought it was you know, it, it, we'd have some fun here <laughs> so i ran rushed in in utica we're in utica new york 
And I rushed in, got dressed, got a bunch of help, got the goalie's equipment, came, came back out and uh, took a couple warm-up shots. And, well, they hated me, Utica, which you can imagine the, the way that I played. So they were licking their chops. And I was just like, okay, here we go. So the guy came down the wing and, and uh, ripped a shot. And I, I came out like Palmateer and I made the save. And there was only two shots. And then the other shot they came down with, they potted a goal on me. And then they were actually uh, pretty professional about it after. Yeah. They kind of backed everything off. And yeah. there was about 12 minutes left in the game, I believe, something like that. And mm -hmm. they kind of ba they backed off and, and uh, they weren't ripping shots at my head and, you know, yeah. running, the, running the crease or whatever, right? Sure. And the referee gave us a pretty stern warning about okay, enough's enough, and yeah, good. and uh, so that's all. That's all that all evolved, and I just nice. figured, listen, it's an experience that I'm gonna I'm gonna jump in net and see what it's like, and I can say yeah. I play pro as a goaltender, and it would help. Tell, you, tell your grandkids someday, buddy. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> uh, that's classic. So Nelly, as a as a hockey player in college, you never made it to the nationals, but you did get there as a coach with the University of Windsor, right, a few years ago, and. Uh, that team was a pretty good story in and of itself, wasn't it? It was. We were uh, well. Number one, I give a lot of a lot of uh, uh, applause to Kevin Hamlin. He was just he's just an uh, uh, an amazing coach. Yeah. Um, and then we had we had a we had a lot of uh, you know Windsor's a blue blue collar town. Yeah. Um, a lot of we we had a lot at that time. We had a lot of tough time in recruiting to Windsor. Right. So we were. Kevin Hamlin rolled the dice on a couple of players. And one of them was Spencer Hamlin, uh, Spencer Palmel, sorry. He was from out West and, and uh, he was a big, he was a big, we, they all were, but he was a big, he was the MVP of uh, the year that year for Canada. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, Spencer came down on it being as a 13th forward. Oh, wow. Uh, the, the previous year. And he just evolved into the special player for us and, mm. and then took off. So we, he, he, he did a lot for us. We had a really tight team, you know, like, and we had a lot of blue collar players. We had a lot of junior B players um, right. that year. The year before, I coached the Vipers. Well, Kevin Hamlin committed to six or seven of those kids. Okay. And we were just that underdog team. Uh, like I remember being in in uh, uh, Halifax, and we were walking by one of the teams, and uh, I didn't have my. I was going to a like I had to go to a, uh, a press conference. We all had kind of our duties, so I was walking by. I didn't have my jacket on. I was just walking just by them. They said, can you believe it? This, uh, can you believe the University of Windsor is here? They get, all they are just a bunch of junior B hockey players. <laughs> so I just kept walking. And then sure enough, I passed the message on, right? Yeah. And Poster reason, board material. Yeah. And then yeah. we ended up beating Acadia. We upset Acadia. We beat them 5-2. Like, we gave it to them pretty good. And uh, so it was really exciting until we got on national TV for the semifinal game. Right. And uh, Saskatchewan beat us 9-0. Yeah. So it was, uh, but it was a, an, an amazing feeling. It was just like uh, we, like, it was almost like that was our national championship because we sure. were, we weren't supposed to be there. Sure. And we beat Acadia 5 2. And we're thinking if we just win, you know, our goalie gets hot, we win one game, well, all of a sudden we're going to be in the nationals. And again, who knows, right? Yeah. And uh, it we finally happen. attacked a pound of flesh against Acadia after all. Oh, yeah. 100%. 100%. Got them back. And I, I tell you, man, was, th those memories went through too. Like, yeah, for you know, sure. You, they were they, they couldn't believe it. They were stunned that they lost. You know, if you yeah. lose there, basically you lose your first game. You're, you're, you're especially now you're out. But back then, yeah. you still had an outside chance. Right. And uh, they were stunned and couldn't believe it. And uh, so it was really a, a I wouldn't call it just a moral victory. Like we did a lot of work with that team, and we had a really good team. Good. But we just never got the credit for it. We never yeah. would be a top ten team. They would always be on, you know, an honorable mention. Mm -hmm. And we just build off of all that, uh, you know. Uh, uh, underdog story and right. uh we just moved on we had a great time we went to halifax and got to see all the people from pei so that's that's what excited me to be cool to be honest yeah. with you i got to see a lot of the guys there um, nice. except for watching the games and got to sit down and have a beer with them went out with trent bird that night <laughs> uh, oh yeah me and birdie went out and uh, he brought me to uh, uh who's the fellow that does the kitchen he's really good he does the kitchen uh, concerts uh bruce uh, gothro Bruce Guthrow. We went and watched right. Bruce Guthrow. We brought he, right. he just got us in because he's good friends with Bruce. Yeah. Yeah. And we sat there that night and just kind of mellowed out and nice. chilled out and listened to to a uh, small hockey world coming back to play once again, eh? Yeah, he looked after me, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. you're coming across Canada again and here's another uh, person from Prince Edward Island saying, Come on, let's go, Nelly. We're going for for to go watch see a buddy of mine play a concert, have a few beers and, and hang out and, get, and catch up with each other and, and uh, that's what we did. So it was really nice. Really nice. So Nelly, you're you're settled in uh, La Salle, 
Uh, you mentioned the Junior B Vipers, which sent some teams to the University of Windsor. You're the current GM of that team. Um, and you are also got proven performance hockey with Jimmy Somnes, a former Charlottetown Abbey and former Panther himself. Um, you're pretty busy. You've got some things happening. How's, uh, how's that going for you these days? It's going, it's going really well. Uh, meet myself and Jimmy. Uh, when I moved to Windsor, got married and moved to Windsor in 2007. Mm-hmm. And I was going to come up and open up my own hockey school. And Jimmy had a hockey school here. So we decided, listen, let's, let's join together and mm-hmm. let's help each other out. And, and so we joined together. We were roommates and buddies and we were attached to the hip when we lived in PEI. Right. And again, we, we come back to Prince Edward Island all the time for myself anyways. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we got that, got that rolling. And then in 2008, a uh, position became available for the LaSalle Vipers as a head coach. And uh, so I put my name in the, in the hat and I uh, was fortunate enough to get the, uh, to get the job as the, uh, for the LaSalle Vipers in 2008. And I had that for five years where I was in U Sport. And then 2017, our ownership um, called me up and, and asked if I wanted to return as GM and, and head coach. And uh, I was enthused. I couldn't believe it. Um, I, I really enjoy being in uh, LaSalle and with the Vipers yeah. and uh, had a chat with my wife. Uh, and uh, we both agreed that let's do it. So because my schedule is kind of wonky and it's good, but it's a little bit, uh, you got to be kind of flex with it. Sure. And uh, so in 2020, uh, one, we hired a, a kid that was my captain with the Vipers. And we also, uh, two other um uh, guys that were Vipers at the time. I had coached them, fortunate enough to coach these guys. And we hired them. It's a young crew. of They're about 30, 31, 32 years old. Yeah. And uh, so now I just get to hang out with these guys. And and uh, they're doing an incredible job. And and uh, so now I get to go to the rink and be a GMN and help build teams. And, and so what I'm really enjoying. And it gives me more time at home yeah. uh, with my family. So there is some perks to not doing both. And and I'm um, just in luck, being very fortunate to be our ownership owns the Windsor Spitfires, okay. OHL. Right. They own us, and then they also own Lakeshore Canadians Junior C. Okay. Um, so we're probably one of the, we're, we're the first ones that did that this year. There's another uh, ownership that did the same thing. So it's a we, we got a uh, an awesome setup, a great affiliation, mm-hmm. um, and it's just starting to grow because they took over a full ownership uh, in a couple of years ago. Right. So now we're able to do what we want to do, and and uh, and so it's been a it's been a, it's been a that that part's been awesome. Yeah, and we saw it has been great, man. We've had lots of laughs and giggles. We talked uh, really a lot of our talk because that's where we met. Um, I helped recruit Jimmy to Prince Edward Island with Billy. Oh, and, really? Yeah. Uh, so we had lots of we talked all the time about PEI and yeah. all the fun stuff that we did and yeah. the commotion that we caused, and and uh, <laughs> so we 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 laugh and giggle quite a bit with each other and. And uh, so it's uh, it's it's been an absolute pleasure to be be with them, and and uh, we're, we're we're trying to grow things, and and at the same time keep them simple too, so we can enjoy our life. Uh, Jimmy's got a, a two and a half year old Nezrin, um, right. so he's late in the game, and so he's mm-hmm. really enjoying that a lot. Good for him. Yeah, yeah. Good for him. And, uh, so he's a, um, he's an amazing dad. He's a great dad, very patient, and uh, just a good just a good guy. So okay. it's uh, yeah, it's been it's been it's been a nice journey. So. Well, Melly, your journey has been fascinating. Uh, you're, it's nice to see you come in full circle with, you know, you can down to the island. You're, you, you haven't forgotten about the island. You love the island. Uh, we consider you an islander, really, you know, and uh, you've got, because you've got a lot of island qualities in you. And, uh, you know, you're, uh, you're a lot of fun to watch. I'm really glad to see that you're, you remained in the game, Nelly, and, uh, you know, I, I really like what you're espousing with your schools, with the work you're doing with the Catholic school boards and stuff like that, too. And it's great to have people like you involved and giving back to the game. It's given you a lot as well, too. Yes, it has. And I and I really like to fight. Uh, PPI was my – that that was my – I've been up being there for seven years. I went back for a summer. But I could truly sit here today and say Prince Edward Island was my – um, they, you guys, PI gave me the, the people gave me the opportunity to make a ton of mistakes. Yeah. Um, they gave me the opportunity. They, they forgave me. Um, mm-hmm. They taught me what honesty was about. They taught me mm-hmm. what toughness was about. They taught me what family was about. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, so I'm, I'm indebted. Well said, buddy. You're a beauty. 
So. Thanks for being a Panther. Thank you. You know, great, buddy. Thanks for coming on. Great story. The longest we've had, Nelly, but listen, we probably could have talked for another 45 I, minutes. I could talk forever with you guys. It's, both, <laughs> it's just, just incredible. And I just uh, thank you very much for having me. I, I really appreciate it. Thanks, bud. So. Great stuff.